The value of education, education from love, with love, and for love. Saizen University, Tokyo, June 2001. In June 2001, a large number of teachers and office staff of all the Saizen schools, as well as of Saizen University, met in Tokyo with Sister Rita. She took advantage of this opportunity in order to speak about the value of our work of education in service of the gospel, something very dear to her. In the second part of this conference, she explains to the teachers how it was the experience of the love of God which inspired St. Raphaela Maria to found the congregation, and how she saw the possibility that through education other persons a know and love God. From this it follows, as Sister Rita says, that the result of educating from love is educating in love and for love. This can be done only through a comprehensive education that molds the person to the image and likeness of God. Introduction it is a joy for me to be here today with you, teachers and office staff of the Sizen Schools and University. Over a year ago, when Sister Clara Tuama told me that she wanted me to speak to you about our education, without any hesitation, I told her that I would do so. I have been looking forward to meeting with you and speaking to you about this topic. Although on some occasions we have met one another either personally or in small groups, this is the first time that I am meeting officially with all of you. I know also that today is the first time that so many size and teachers have gathered together. It is a significant meeting in the history of our educational centers in Japan. I feel that St. Raphaela Maria is here among us, happy about the communion that we are going to experience today. She will accompany us with affection and interest. Education from Love Saint Raphaela Maria had a profound experience of the love of God, his nearness, his tenderness, his forgiveness. She gave herself completely to him and founded the congregation of the handmaids of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. She wanted others to know and experience the great love that God has for them, and she made sure that the congregation would be dedicated to Christian education. Raphaela Maria also loved humanity. Jesus Christ loved every man and woman to the point of handing himself over and giving his life for us on the cross. This faith, so deeply rooted in her, made her regard men and women with special affection. Her love was universal, like that of Jesus Christ. She had a great heart. She insisted that we concern ourselves not with a limited number of people, but that we include the whole world. For her all men and women were children of God, loved by him. Once, while traveling, she saw many people, and from her heart she exclaimed very spontaneously, how many children God has. She believed profoundly that God is the Father of all, and we are brothers and sisters in him. Her great desire was that everyone might know and love him. If Raphaela Maria had not experienced this love of God and love for men and women, our institute would never have come into being. We would never have had our educational centers in many countries of the world. Mother Pillar, Raphaela Maria's sister and co-foundress, and the first handmaids also were women of deep faith in God, conscious of the importance of education. Mother Pillar said that we have to give our lives for the education of youth. Do you recall that this phrase was on the calendar that we made last year, to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the birth of Saint Raphaela Maria. Thus from the very beginning of the Institute, the handmaids have been dedicated especially to education as an integral part of the mission. As I reflect upon these handmaids from the era of the foundation of our congregation, I am also reminded of those missionary handmaids who came to Japan, and in spite of a great deal of suffering and sacrifice, proclaimed the love of Jesus Christ with their words and above all with their lives. In those days to leave their country and to come to Japan meant never to return to their homeland, never to see their families again, nor the other sisters there, 
their companions and sisters in Christ. Nevertheless, they embarked on the journey to this far eastern country. They had to suffer a great deal, persecution, all kinds of hardship, especially during the Second World War, as you know, but they did not leave. Why? Because they experienced the love of God and believed in it. They did not leave Japan because they loved the Japanese people, and they wanted to let them know how much God loves them. For the same reasons, the Japanese handmaids who later joined these missionaries did not leave them. They shared the same hardships, joyfully. Since then more than 50 years have gone by. The majority of our schools and the university have celebrated the golden jubilee of their foundation. We are in another era of the history of Japan and of the size and schools. Currently in Japan there are enough primary schools, secondary schools and universities. The number of children and youth is decreasing noticeably as the result of the lower birth rate. Moreover, in general, the academic level of the government schools is high. They offer a satisfactory education. If that is so, why do we want to continue to operate our schools and the university at the cost of so much sacrifice? For me, the answer is the same as it was in the time of St. Raphaela Maria and of the beginning of our schools here because we believe in God, in His love. We want to communicate to the Japanese people of this century that God loves them, and that for this reason life is worth living. God has a plan, a dream that all men and women will be one family, in which all people can live with dignity as His children, regardless of race, culture, language or religion. It is an education, which as I have previously stated, forms the person and promotes the true development and progress of the people, the most efficacious means to achieve this. I am more and more convinced that education, based on gospel values, which Jesus lived is what this world, and also what Japan needs at the beginning of the third millennium. For this reason, on thinking about our education, we would want to emphasize always that our educational philosophy is based on the love of God, on love for people. If our schools were to forget or lose this foundation, this identity, they would no longer be schools based on the spirit of Saint Raphaela Maria. They would no longer be size in schools and university. In this sense it is very important to ensure our education through the curriculum and organization of the schools. Education in Love Our education is also education in love. This is the result of education from love. If God loves us, we have to love our brothers and sisters as He loves them. Each person is a unique and priceless gift from God. From this belief and conviction come respect and love for our students. We want to love them with the heart of God. We want to be persons who accept and respect the other, who have patience with the rhythm of growth of each one, persons who believe in the potential of the other, who live out our preference for the weak and vulnerable. The students will comprehend when there is equality in our treatment of persons. How important it is for each person to feel valued for what he or she is, a son or daughter of God, loved by him, more than for what he or she has or does. The students need teachers, but they also need witnesses of these values. Without the witness of your life, education in the service of the gospel will remain only theories on paper, it will have no impact. Good relationships are the fundamental vehicle of education, and not only one-on-one -on -one relationships, but also group relationships. It is true that God loves each one personally, but He also calls us to walk together through life. A faculty united in the educational project united in carrying it out, where the teachers back one another up, where they live brotherhood, is a faculty which gives witness. Their work and programs will have great influence in the life of the student body, and the school will be filled with peace and joy. Once, one of our sisters, who is a former student of Sizen, told us that when she attended a meeting with her former classmates, one of them, remembering their school days commented, how affectionately and respectfully the teachers and sisters in size and treated us. How happy we were in our school. 
and all the others immediately chimed in with a resounding, yes, how beautiful. It made me feel very proud. I want to congratulate you on your work. Nevertheless, there is always room for improvement in the quality of our service, isn't there? Education for love. We educate our students for love. That is the goal of our education. We try to form people who love God, persons who know how to approach Him humbly and confidently, thanking Him for all the good things they have received. At the same time, how important it is to teach them to love themselves. A person who grows in healthy self-esteem is a person who will live happily, will love even in difficult situations, and will give the best of herself to others. We educate, of course, so that our students may love others. This world needs men and women who believe that we are all children of God, that we are one family, and who act according to this belief. In our education, we try to form people who know how to respect the dignity of each person, to look for the good in others, open to pluralism, builders of peace and reconciliation, capable of dialoguing with all and living communion. It is essential, especially now, to educate students so that they may feel responsible for promoting justice and love, in solidarity with the poor and the weak. In the world there is a growing poverty, the consequence of globalization and neocolonization. Each time that I visit the developing countries, I find them in a worse situation. This is heartbreaking. It is a challenge for us to continue to labor in Japan to make people aware of this broken world, so that our students may commit to building a more just, more humane, more fraternal world. I realize that you give a great deal of importance to this aspect. To achieve the goal that our students may love God, love others and love themselves, our education is comprehensive. It cultivates all the dimensions that comprise a person created in the image and likeness of God. It is an education which frees and personalizes, which leads them to be free to love, rejecting selfishness and the influences that would impede them from doing this. Of course, the mission which is entrusted to us demands the utmost quality, competence and efficacy, values characteristic of our time. In our centers we strive for an excellence that is not only academic, but also a human excellence in the fullest sense. Before concluding, I want to end this talk with the words of John Paul Roman II in his apostolic letter, Ovo Millennio in you which he signed on January 6th of this year, on the closing of the holy year of 2000. I am sure that you know that last year, 2000, we celebrated 2000 years since the birth of Jesus Christ. It was an extraordinary experience of faith, of the universality of the Church in this letter, the Pope exhorts us to put out into the deep, now, at the beginning of the new millennium. A beginning is always a grace, and if we are in the dawn of the third millennium, responding to the call of the Pope, we will go into the deep, in our lives, in the life of our schools and of the university. As we do this, the Pope invites us to remember the past with gratitude, to live the present with passion, and to look forward to the future with confidence. This is beautiful. Remember the past with gratitude, how many things we have to thank God for. He has given you your vocation as teachers. He has given us this beautiful mission of guiding young people for many years during a privileged time in their lives. The fruit of your work will come later on, in adulthood, when the persons have matured, but you will have the immense satisfaction of having guided their first steps, of having helped to lay the foundations, of having collaborated with God in this most beautiful work. The formation of persons. I am grateful also to everyone who up until now has worked in the size in schools and university. Thanks to them, these seeds that the first handmaids sowed in the midst of much suffering and sacrifice have grown and have become a great leafy tree. How many collaborators and benefactors have helped and supported us. 
All this is reason to give thanks to the Lord. Live the present with passion. We want to dedicate ourselves passionately to education, convinced that our work of education is a valid contribution to Japanese society and to the world. Sister Oliver Rene, a great educator in the Institute, one of the first four handmaids who came to Japan to establish the congregation here, used to say that education is a second creation. God created the world many years ago, and He continues to create it by means of us. To receive the mission of educating is to receive from God an association with His work. It is a mission that evokes passion. Look forward to the future with confidence. Faced with the hard work of education, at times we get tired, we feel pessimistic. Things don't always go well, do they? But let us have trust in God. From how many dangers, problems and difficulties the Lord has saved us. Our work is His. If we operate our schools so that His kingdom may come, how can He not help us? Let us trust in Him. There are many signs of hope in Japan, as in the rest of the world. Dialogue collaboration, reconciliation. My work in the World Council of Religions for Peace opened my eyes to Japan's wonderful collaboration in the field of interreligious dialogue. Our dedicated work, the sacrifices which the parents make for the education of their children, and the friendship among the students are signs of hope. I remember the scholarships sent for the poor children in our schools in Bombay and Koshin. I am grateful for the sacrifices of the students in Kamakura. The beautiful kindergarten on the outskirts of Naga has been made possible thanks to generous help from here. With this gratitude, passion and trust, we will put out into the deep in our education in service of the gospel. It is a fascinating adventure. We already have the oars in our hands. I want to end this talk by thanking you for having come today, a Sunday, and some of you have come from very far. Thank you. Each day I pray in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist for our sisters and for the persons with whom they work. You are present in my prayers. Now, after this meeting, I will pray for you, for your families and your students with even more interest, affection and gratitude. I too worked for several years in schools in England, in Ireland and also in India. So, I consider myself one of you. Although I now am involved in the government of the Institute, encouraging the sisters, organizing meetings and writing letters, I consider myself an educator, because of our vocation as handmaids. I count on your prayers for me. Let's help one another to build a more humane and fraternal world through our dedication to education in service of the gospel and to the heart of God, from love, in love and for love. Leave the present with passion. We want to dedicate ourselves passionately to education, convinced that our work of education is a valid contribution to Japanese society and to the world. Sister Oliver Rene, a great educator in the Institute, one of the first four handmaids who came to Japan to establish the congregation here, used to say that education is a second creation. God created the world many years ago, and He continues to create it by means of us. To receive the mission of educating is to receive from God an association with His work. It is a mission that evokes passion. Look forward to the future with confidence. Faced with the hard work of education, at times we get tired, we feel pessimistic. Things don't always go well, do they? But let us have trust in God. From how many dangers, problems and difficulties the Lord has saved us. Our work is His. If we operate our schools so that His kingdom may come, how can He not help us? Let us trust in Him. There are many signs of hope in Japan, as in the rest of the world. Dialogue collaboration, reconciliation. My work in the World Council of Religions for Peace opened my eyes to Japan's wonderful collaboration in the field of interreligious dialogue. Our dedicated work, the sacrifices which the parents make for the education of their children, and the friendship among the students are signs of hope. 
I remembered the scholarships sent for the poor children in our schools in Bombay and Koshin. I am grateful for the sacrifices of the students in Kamakura. The beautiful kindergarten on the outskirts of Naga has been made possible thanks to generous help from here. With this gratitude, passion and trust, we will put out into the deep in our education in service of the gospel. It is a fascinating adventure. We already have the oars in our hands. I want to end this talk by thanking you for having come today, a Sunday, and some of you have come from very far. Thank you. Each day I pray in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist for our sisters and for the persons with whom they work. You are present in my prayers. Now, after this meeting, I will pray for you, for your families and your students with even more interest, affection and gratitude. I too worked for several years in schools in England, in Ireland and also in India. So, I consider myself one of you. Although I now am involved in the government of the institute, encouraging the sisters, organizing meetings and writing letters, I consider myself an educator, because of our vocation as handmaids. I count on your prayers for me. Let's help one another to build a more humane and fraternal world through our dedication to education in service of the gospel and to the heart of God, from love, in love and for love.